When a passenger plane crashes, the immediate tragedy is clear. Lives are lost, and families are shattered. But beyond the human sorrow lies a complex financial story that few people see. A plane crash can set off a chain reaction in the economy, affecting everyone from insurance companies and airlines to investors and even competitors. Who bears the cost? Who ends up making money? And how do these events affect the stock market? By looking at the financial impact of plane crashes, we can understand the hidden dynamics that follow these disasters. After a plane crash, several parties have to pay significant amounts of money. Let's break down who these parties are and what they have to cover. 1. The airline. The airline is usually the first to pay. When a crash happens, the airline has to compensate the victim's families. The amount can be huge, depending on the country's laws and the severity of the crash. For example, after the crash of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, which disappeared in 2014, the airline faced claims from the families of the 239 people on board. The exact amount varies, but it's safe to say that airlines can pay millions, or even billions, of dollars in compensation, cover the costs of recovering the wreckage and investigating the crash. This involves working with authorities to figure out what went wrong. If the investigation finds that the airline failed to follow safety regulations, they could face heavy fines, adding to their financial burden. 2. Insurance Companies Airlines carry large insurance policies to protect themselves against accidents. These policies cover the costs mentioned above, including compensating victims and repairing or replacing the aircraft. However, when a crash happens, the insurance payouts can be massive. For example, the insurance payout after the crash of Air France Flight 447 in 2009, where 228 people died, was around $800 million. But that's not the end of the story for airlines. After such large payouts, insurance companies often raise the airline's premiums, making it more expensive for them to operate in the future. Insurance companies also sometimes try to minimize their payouts by challenging claims, leading to legal battles that can drag on for years. 3. Governments and Regulatory Bodies Sometimes the government may step in to help the airline, especially if it's a national carrier or plays a crucial role in the economy. For example, after the crash of Germanwings Flight 9525 in 2015, which was operated by a subsidiary of Lufthansa, the German government supported the airline as it dealt with the crisis. Government agencies also spend money investigating the crash, and if they find that the airline broke the rules, they can impose fines. 4. Legal Costs Plane crashes lead to lawsuits. Victims' families often sue the airline, the aircraft manufacturer, or other parties involved. These lawsuits can lead to massive settlements. For instance, after the crash of Lion Air Flight 610 in 2018, Boeing, the manufacturer of the plane, faced multiple lawsuits and ended up paying hundreds of millions of dollars in settlements. The airline also incurs legal costs defending itself in court. While many suffer financial losses after a crash, others find ways to profit. This might seem surprising, but it's an important part of the economic story. 1. Law Firms Law firms specializing in aviation accidents can make a lot of money after a crash. They represent victims' families and negotiate settlements, usually taking a percentage of the payout. For example, after the crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 in 2019, law firms representing the victims' families secured large settlements from Boeing, who manufactured the plane. The more they win for their clients, the more they earn, so they have a strong incentive to pursue these cases aggressively. Two. Media outlets. Plane crashes attract massive media attention. News outlets rush to cover the story, providing live updates, expert analysis, and detailed reports. This surge in viewership boosts their ratings, which in turn increases their advertising revenue. Documentaries and special reports on the crash also draw in viewers, further increasing profits. The tragic events become a major source of income for these media companies. 3. Investors. Some investors make money by betting that a company's stock price will fall after a crash. This is called short selling. For example, when the Boeing 737 MAX planes were grounded after two fatal crashes, investors who shorted Boeing's stock made significant profits as the company's stock price plummeted. Other investors might take the opposite approach, buying the airline's or manufacturer's stock at a low price, betting that it will eventually recover. This is risky, but it can pay off big if the company rebounds. After the crash of AirAsia Flight 8501 in 2014, for instance, 
Some investors bought AirAsia shares at a low price, and those shares eventually increased in value as the airline recovered. 4. Competitors Competitors of the airline involved in the crash may benefit as passengers lose confidence in the airline that experienced the disaster. This was evident after the crash of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 in 2014. Other airlines flying similar routes saw an increase in bookings as travelers chose them over Malaysia Airlines. The crash damaged Malaysia Airlines' reputation, leading to financial struggles, while competitors gained market share. One of the most immediate effects of a plane crash is its impact on the stock prices of the airline and, in some cases, the aircraft manufacturer. The reaction from the stock market is usually swift and severe. 1. Initial Drop when a plane crash happens, the airline's stock price usually drops sharply. This happened with Boeing after the crashes of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, both involving their 737 MAX aircraft. Boeing's stock lost more than 10% of its value in the weeks following the second crash, wiping out billions of dollars in market value. The reason for this drop is that investors expect the airline or manufacturer to face huge costs, compensation, legal fees, fines, and lost business. They also fear that customers might avoid flying with that airline or using that aircraft model, which could hurt future profits. 2. Volatility In the days and weeks after a crash, the stock price might bounce around a lot as new information comes out. For example, if investigators find that the crash was due to pilot error rather than a mechanical problem, the stock might recover some of its lost value. On the other hand, if the investigation reveals a deeper issue, like a design flaw in the aircraft, the stock might fall further. This volatility creates opportunities for investors who are willing to take risks. Some might buy the stock at a low point, hoping that it will rebound, while others might continue short selling if they believe the company's troubles are far from over. 3. Long-Term Effects the long-term impact on an airline's stock price depends on how the company manages the crisis and whether it can restore public confidence. After the crash of Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 in 2018, where an engine failure led to a passenger's death, Southwest's stock initially fell but then recovered as the airline took steps to reassure the public and improve safety. On the other hand, Malaysia Airlines struggled to recover after the losses of flights MH370 and MH17, and its stock suffered for a long time. For aircraft manufacturers like Boeing or Airbus, the long-term impact depends on whether the crash reveals a broader problem with their planes. If it does, the manufacturer might face cancellations of orders and a loss of future business, as seen with Boeing's 737 MAX after the crashes mentioned earlier. Boeing had to ground the entire fleet of 737 MAX aircraft, costing the company billions in lost revenue and legal settlements. 4. Recovery and Investor Strategies Despite the initial shock, some investors see opportunities to profit in the aftermath of a crash. If they believe the airline or manufacturer will recover, they might buy shares at a low price, betting on a future rebound. This strategy paid off for some investors after the crash of Air France Flight 447 in 2009. The airline's stock fell immediately after the crash, but eventually recovered as the company managed the crisis and improved its safety protocols. However, this strategy is not without risks. If the airline or manufacturer fails to recover or faces additional problems, the stock might never return to its previous levels, leading to losses for investors who bet on a rebound. The effects of a plane crash don't end with the immediate financial losses and stock market reactions. The long-term economic consequences can be far-reaching, affecting everything from regulations to consumer behavior. 1. Regulatory changes. Plane crashes often lead to new regulations aimed at preventing similar incidents in the future. These regulations can be costly for airlines and manufacturers. For example, after the crash of TWA Flight 800 in 1996, where a fuel tank explosion caused the plane to crash, killing all 230 people on board, the FAA introduced new rules requiring changes to the design of fuel tanks in commercial aircraft. Implementing these changes cost airlines and manufacturers millions of dollars. While these regulations improve safety, they also increase operating costs. Airlines may need to invest in new technology, upgrade their fleets, or retrain their staff, all of which can be expensive. Smaller airlines, in particular, may struggle to meet these new requirements, leading to industry consolidation as they are acquired by larger, more financially stable competitors. 
2. Impact on Consumer Confidence A plane crash can shake public confidence in the airline involved, especially if the incident is widely publicized. This loss of confidence can lead to a drop in bookings, hurting the airline's revenue. For example, after the crash of Asiana Airlines Flight 214 in 2013, where the plane crashed on landing in San Francisco, killing three passengers, the airline saw a significant drop in ticket sales as passengers chose other airlines. Sometimes, a series of crashes or safety incidents can lead to a broader loss of confidence in air travel. This was the case in the aftermath of the 737 MAX crashes, where passengers became wary of flying on that particular aircraft, leading to cancellations and a drop in bookings for airlines that used the model. 3. Shifts in Market Dynamics Plane crashes can also change the competitive landscape of the airline industry. If an airline involved in a crash struggles to recover, its competitors may gain market share. This was seen after the crashes involving Malaysia Airlines, which lost significant market share to other airlines in the region. Manufacturers can also be affected. For example, after the crashes involving Boeing's 737 MAX, some airlines switched their orders to Airbus, Boeing's main competitor. This shift in demand can have long-term implications for the market share of aircraft manufacturers. 4. Innovations in Safety and Technology while plane crashes are tragic, they often lead to improvements in safety and technology. Investigations into crashes frequently uncover weaknesses in aircraft design, maintenance procedures, or flight operations. Addressing these weaknesses can lead to innovations that make flying safer in the long run. For instance, after the crash of Air France Flight 447, which was caused in part by the crew's inability to handle a high-altitude stall, there was a push for better pilot training and improved cockpit automation. These changes have since been implemented, making air travel safer for everyone. Aircraft manufacturers and airlines that invest in these innovations can gain a competitive edge, attracting customers who value safety. Over time, these improvements can lead to a stronger, more resilient aviation industry. A plane crash is a tragic event, but it's also a complex financial situation that affects many different parts of the economy. Airlines, insurance companies, governments, and victims' families all face significant costs, while law firms, media outlets, and some investors may find ways to profit. The stock market reacts quickly to these disasters, with the airlines and manufacturers' stock prices often taking a hit, followed by a period of volatility. In the long term, plane crashes can lead to regulatory changes, shifts in market dynamics, and innovations in safety and technology. Understanding these financial dynamics is important not just for those in the aviation industry, but for anyone interested in how major events can ripple through the economy. By looking at who pays and who profits after a plane crash, we can gain insight into the hidden economic forces at play when disaster strikes at 30,000 feet.